dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us be fitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe. Yet so far hath discretion fought with nature, that we, with wisest sorrow, think unto him with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state have we, as were with a defeated joy, with an auspicious and a dropping eye, with mirth and funeral, and with dirge and marriage, in equal scale, weighing the light and dole taken to wife. Nor have we here and borrowed your better wisdoms, which have freely gone with this affair along. For all our thanks. Now follows that you know, young Fort Rash holding a weak suppose of our worth, by thinking that by our dear late brother's death, that our kingdom is disjoint, not afraid. Pleased with this dream of his advantage, he hath not failed to pest us with message, pointing us to the surrender of those lands lost by his father to our most valiant brother. So much for him. Now, Laertes, what's the news with you? Told of so some suit, what is Laertes? Thou have not speak of reason to the day to lose thy voice. What shall thou have, Laertes? That is not my offer nor thy asking. The head is not more native to the heart, the head more instrumental to the mouth, than is the throne of Denmark to thy father. What wouldst thou beg, Laertes? My dread lord, do leave in favor to return to France, from whence so willing I came to Denmark, to show my duty in your coronation. Yet I must confess that duty done. My thoughts and wishes bend again to our friends, and bow them gracefully with your feet and pardon. Have you your father's leave? What says Polonius? Ha, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave. <laughs> my laborsome petition, and at last upon his will, I sealed my heart consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair lair, these times you die, and thy best graces bend it at thy will. And now, our cousin Hamlet and my son. A little more than kid in less than con. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord. I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast a night of color off, and let thine eyes look for friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veil lids seek thy noble father in the dust. The most is common, all that lives in the sky, passing through nature into eternity. Aye, madam, it is common. If it be, why seem it so particular to thee? Seems, madam? Nay, it is I know not seem. Tis not alone in my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black, nor windy suspiration of false breath, no, nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected behavior of the visage, together with all moods, forms, and shapes of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. But I have that within, which passes to show these but the trappings and the suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to give these warning duties to your father. But you must know your father lost a father. That father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow. But to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. Tis unmanly grief. It shows a will most incorrect to heaven, a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled. For what we know must be and is as common as any of the most vulgar things to sense. Why should we, in our previous opposition, take it to heart? Five! Tis a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature, whose common theme is death of fathers. Till he that cried today, from this first course, till he that died today, this must be so. We pray to you, throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as a father. For let the world say, no, you are the most immediate to our throne, with no less nobility of love than that which dearest father bears his son, do I impart towards you. And your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg is most retrograde to our desire. We beseech you, bend you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye. Our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay with us. Go not to Wittenberg. I will in all my best obey you, madam. 
What? Tis a loving and fair reply, madam, come. Be as ourselves in Denmark, and grace were of no jocund health that Denmark drinks today. And the great cannons to the clouds shall tell, the king's rouse shall brew it again, who speaking earthly thunder come away. How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem all the uses of this world, fire on it, fire. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed things rank in gross as nature possesses thee. That it should come to this, but three months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. So excellent the king that was to this Hyperion to the Sabbath, so loving to my mother that he might not fatigue the winds of heaven, visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth! Must I remember? Why, she would hang on him, as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on, yet within a month! Let me not think on it. Frailty thy name, this woman. A little month! Or ere the shoes were old, and when she did fall on my poor father's body, like Niobe all tears. Why, she, even she, oh God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than Ida Hercules, within a month, or ere the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing of her galled eyes, she married me. Oh, most wicked speed to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor cannot come to good. But break my heart. For I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. I am glad to see you well. Horatio, I do not forget myself. <laughs> Stay, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Sir, my good friend, I'll change the name with you. And what make you for Whitmer, Horatio Marcellus? My lord. Sir, my good friend, I'm very glad to see you. Good even, sir, for what in faith bring you from Whitmer? I try to visit, my lord. I would not hear any say, sir. How will you do mine ear that violence to make a trust of your own report against yourself? I know you are no truant. But what is your affair in Elsinore who teach you to drink deep and talk? My lord, I came to see your father's funeral. I pray they do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, my lord, follow the heart upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The three old big meats did coldly furnish the marriage tables. If I had met my dearest foe in heaven or ever had seen that day, Horatio, my father, he thinks I've seen my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him once. He was a good king. He was a man. Take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesterday. I saw who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. Two men, a season your admiration for the tenth years, I may deliver upon the witness of this gentleman this marvel to you. For God's love let me him. Two nights together had this gentleman, Marcellus, on his watch in the dead waste in the middle of the night, encountered a figure like your father, armed at point exactly top up high, appears before them with solemn march, goes slowly and stately by them. Thrice he walked with the press of his fierce repressed eyes, within his trunk and flame, who will say, he feels almost a jelly with the aptitude. Stand dumb and speak not to him, this to me in your secrecy and partake, and I with them at the third night watch. Where they had delivered both in time, form of the faith, each word be good here. The apparition comes. I knew your father. At least his hands are not well. But well, where was it? My lord, upon the platform where we walked. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer me tonight. Yet he thought it lifted its head and did address itself to motion, as it were to speak. And even then the morning cock grew loud, and at sound it shrunk it paced away and vanished from our sights. It is very strange. I let you live, my noble lord, it is true. And we do think to write down in our duties, but you know it. Indeed, indeed, sir, but it's troublesome. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. I will watch tonight. Perchance, we'll walk again. I warn you both. 
If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace, I pray you. If you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence and still, and whatsoever may happen tonight, give it an understanding, but no comment. I will requite your loves. So fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our duty to your honor. Your loves and mine to you. Farewell. My father's spirit in arms, all is not well. I doubt some foul play, the night will come. Till then, sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all be all so well.